This devotional address with Jeffrey Bunker was given on April 5th, 2016. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our devotional. We're pleased to have Jeffrey N. Bunker, Associate Executive Director of Student Academic and Advisement Services, as our speaker today. We extend a special welcome to his wife, Stephanie, as well as their family members and friends who are here. Brother Bunker currently serves as the Associate Executive Director of Student Academic and Advisement Services, the unit on campus that oversees several critical operations, including admissions, financial aid, and scholarships, and the Registrar's Office. Brother Bunker became the University Registrar at BYU in 2006 and served in that role until being appointed to his current position in 2013. Prior to coming to BYU, Brother Bunker had served in similar office settings at BYU-Hawaii and the University of Northern Colorado. After serving in the England Leeds mission, Brother Bunker earned a Bachelor of Science in Sociology and a Master of Educational Leadership from BYU. He and his wife, Stephanie, have three children and four grandchildren. We now welcome Brother Jeffrey Bunker as our devotional speaker this morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you for participating in devotional today. I know it's a busy time of year with papers, projects, and finals pending. I promise to do my best to reward your time investment with something helpful for you now and throughout your life. According to a very fun website I found, it was 36 years, one month, and 10 days ago that as a freshman student at BYU, I sat where one of you is sitting today, and I listened carefully as President Ezra Taft Benson, then president of the Quorum of Twelve Apostles, gave a talk titled 14 Fundamentals in Following the Prophet. President Benson shared how we could more faithfully follow the living prophets and keep the, better keep the commandments of God. The spirit was strong that day, and I was motivated by President Benson's remarks. I thought to myself, I'm going to follow his counsel and be a better follower of the prophets and more faithful in keeping the commandments of God. But I can do better than that. From this point on, I'm not even going to make any mistakes. Now, I know all of you are a lot smarter than I was as a freshman. You would see the impossibility and perhaps silliness of my well-intentioned commitment. As I was exiting the devotional, I paused to use the restroom. I was concentrating so intently on my new commitment to not make any mistakes that I didn't notice the cute little stick figure wearing a triangular dress on the restroom door. <laughs> you are ahead of me here. <clears throat> it wasn't until I turned the corner that I realized where I stood. There standing in front of a large mirror was a young woman brushing her long black hair. I hadn't even made it out of this very building before I failed at my new commitment. Now, as an aside, I am still grateful to this day to that young woman for not calling for security. <laughs> Can you imagine the look on the security officer's faces as I tried to explain that I was concentrating so hard on never making another mistake when I walked in and made a mistake? In my mind's eye, I can see and hear the security officers as they look at each other and say, Yeah, right, book him, Dano. <laughs> but today, I hopefully come to you a little wiser to share some counsel on something that I have worked on and am still working on ever since that day. There is a phrase thought to originate from Proverbs 23, verse 7, that goes like this. We sow a thought and reap an act. We, re we sow an act and reap a habit. We sow a habit and reap a character. We sow a character and reap a destiny. As members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, our destiny is to live eternally with our Savior in the presence of Heavenly Father. Because of very real covenants that we make at, the, at baptism and in the temple, our destiny also includes living eternally with a spouse, children, and extended families. 
Truly, families can be forever. The scriptures teach us that the Lord himself says his work and his glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of men. As members of Christ's restored church, we should try to understand the actuality of eternal life and the reality of our personal destiny. Our destiny, as grandiose and incomprehensible as it is to fully understand, begins with the tiniest of individual thoughts. These little things that we call thoughts accompany us almost throughout all, every moment of every day of our entire life. They can be small, but immensely and intensely powerful. They will ultimately determine our character and our destiny. Thoughts must be consciously and carefully monitored and directed so the acts, habits, and character that surely follow them are consistent with the commandments of God and lead to the destiny that is inherently ours. Now, you may have heard of the starfish story. It's been adapted numerous times and by numerous people from Lauren Isley's essay entitled The Star Thrower. Based on these numerous adaptations, the story goes something like this. There was an old man walking along the seashore, and in the distance he saw a young person doing something near the water's edge. The old man approached, and he saw, as the old man approached, he saw it was a boy surrounded by numerous starfish that had washed ashore and were lying in the sand. The old man watched, intrigued, as the boy would pick up starfish after starfish and throw them as far as he could over the breaking surge. After some time, the old man approached the boy and said, Son, do you realize that there are thousands of starfish on this shore? Certainly what you are doing can make no real difference. After respectfully listening, the boy reached down and picked up another starfish and hurled it into the ocean. Then, looking thoughtfully at the old man, the boy said, it made a difference to that one, and he continued to throw more starfish back into the water. Now, all of us can benefit from the excellent principle in this story. Doing something good against what seems insurmountable odds does make a difference. But today, I'd like us for, for us to create a different kind of starfish story. This story has a very special purpose with an eternal application. You, in this story, you are the young man or woman at the ocean's edge. The shore represents your mind and ultimately your life, which is comprised of thoughts, acts, habits, and a character. The starfish in this story represent unwanted or inappropriate thoughts that sometimes come as you try to transition from a carnal, sensual, and devilish nature to a state <clears throat> where you possess the same character as your Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, it is possible that some starfish in your new story aren't necessarily good or bad thoughts. They can be time wasters that keep us from thinking or doing something productive or purposeful. For some of you, the starfish may represent negative thoughts about roommates, church, or family members, co-workers, or others. For some starfish, for some, starfish will be thoughts of revenge, resentment, or reclusiveness. Perhaps some starfish will be negative thoughts related to self-image, self-worth, or even self-destructive behaviors. Some starfish may be motivated by the pursuit of power, fame, or fortune. There may be starfish representing thoughts related to immoral behavior with someone from either the opposite or same gender. I cannot represent all the types of unwanted or sinful thoughts, but I invite you to reflect on those that you know you struggle with as you consider your story. In all of these examples, it is possible the starfish have already been sown into acts, habits, or even the foundation of your character, but not yet into your destiny. 
Now, you are standing on the shore of your life. The waves bring what you allow into your life. With each incoming wave, there is the possibility that a new or a reoccurring starfish washes ashore. Typically, your desire is to have a clean ocean front. It's beautiful when it's clean. And when it's clean, you feel comfortable inviting others there. It's where you want your friends and your family to be. It feels good, and typically you want it to remain that way. But there may be times when you actually find yourself inviting certain starfish onto your shore. There may be some starfish that are secretly your favorites. Initially, they are exciting and enticing when they first arrive. But you soon realize, in fact, you may have known for a long time, that they clutter your shore and quickly decay into an ugly mess. Now, it is both our challenge as well as our opportunity in this life to throw our starfish back into the sea. We need to fling them as far over the breaking water as we can so that they will not come back again. Having pure, positive, and appropriate thoughts will affect all aspects of your life. It will affect who you marry, what kind of spouse you will be, how you will teach and raise your children. It will affect what kind of job you have and possibly how successful you are in your employment. It will affect your testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ, your faithfulness in the church and to your callings, and your commitment to covenants you have made or will make with God. In short, having pure, positive, and appropriate thoughts will determine your life and your eternities. Perhaps you may appropriately ask, well, how do I do it? How do I replace negative or inappropriate thoughts with pure and positive ones that lead to good acts, good ha habits, and good character? <clears throat> it is especially challenging for us to control our thoughts when we live in a world of ever-increasing, in-your-face carnal confrontiveness, as termed by Elder Neil A. Maxwell. And President Boyd K. Packer of the Quorum of Twelve Apostles gave some guidance on how we can accomplish this task. Quote, Probably the greatest challenge to people of any age, particularly young people, and the most difficult thing you will face in mortal life is to learn to control your thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. One who can control his thoughts has conquered himself. Now, President Packer continued, This is what I would teach you. Choose from among the sacred music of the Church a favorite hymn, one with words that are uplifting and music that is reverent, one that makes you feel something akin to inspiration, now use this hymn as the place for your thoughts to go. Make it your emergency channel. Whenever you find these shady actors have slipped from the sidelines of your thinking onto the stage of your mind, put on this record, as it were. As the music begins and the words form in your thoughts, the unworthy ones will slip shamefully away. It will change the whole mood on the stage of your mind. Because it is uplifting and clean, the baser thoughts will disappear. For while virtue by choice will not associate with filth, evil cannot tolerate the presence of light. There are many strategies that you can use to control your thoughts. The critical thing is to consciously recognize the unwanted thought and acknowledge that it will lead to actions that lead to habits that lead to character and eventually to your destiny. Once recognized, replace the unwanted thought with something uplifting. The void created by removing an unwanted thought must be replaced by something of value. One person shared with me that she replaces inappropriate thoughts by reflecting on her temple covenants. She ponders on the words of the covenants and their sacred and eternal meaning. She reflects on the security these covenants personally bring to her and to her marriage and to her young children. She also ponders on the promised and eternal blessings associated with each covenant. 
A returned missionary once shared that he tries to imagine the sublime glory of the Savior. This has helped him replace undesirable thoughts with virtuous ones that elevate his mind to a holier place. He tries to imagine what it was like for Joseph Smith when he saw God the Father and his son, Jesus Christ, in their glory. He imagines what it would feel like to gaze into the Savior's eyes and to feel of his approving love. A young woman once shared when she recognized an unwanted thought had crept onto the stage of her mind that immediate prayer provided her with a, a safe refuge. She found as she focused on sincerely speaking to her Heavenly Father, the unwanted <clears throat> thought seemed to melt away and she felt peace as the Holy Spirit prompted her in her prayer. All of these methods can help us control our thoughts. A personal reminder that I have created for myself is what I call the five R's. The first R is to recognize when a thought is inappropriate, unworthy, or unwanted. The second R is to remove the thought as quickly as it is recognized. The third R is to replace the thought with something pure, positive, or productive. And the fourth R is to, immediate, to repent immediately when necessary. And the fifth R is to repeat the process as often as required for as long as required. The blessings associated with keeping your shoreline clean and unencumbered of starfish are many. The Doctrine and Covenants promise if you have charity <coughs> towards all and if you let virtue garnish your thoughts unceasingly, then shall thy confidence wax strong in the presence of God, and the doctrine of the priesthood shall distill upon thy soul as the dews of, from heaven. The Holy Ghost shall be thy constant companion and thy scepter, an unchanging scepter of righteousness and truth. And thy dominion shall be an everlasting dominion, and without compulsory means it shall flow unto thee forever and ever. Another way to construct these scriptural blessings is that you can approach the Lord in prayer, asking for whatever righteous need you have. <coughs> and expect with faith and confidence the Lord will hear and answer your prayer. It means, under, it means your understanding of the mysteries of heaven can expand to where faith becomes knowledge. It means the Holy Ghost will carefully lead you by constant personal revelation to truth, wisdom, and understanding. It means you will, with legitimacy, be able to lead, teach, and inspire family, friends, and others who love, respect, and seek for your influence, and you can do it forever. It ultimately sets in place your eternal destiny, and all this because you chose charity and virtuous thoughts. Addressing the priesthood session of General Conference, yet equally applicable to all the women of the Church, President Benson said, quote, a priesthood holder is virtuous. Virtuous behavior implies that he has pure thoughts and clean actions. He will not lust in his heart, for to do so is to deny the faith and to lose the spirit. He will not commit adultery nor anything like unto it. This means fornication, homosexual behavior, self-abuse, child molestation, or any other sexual perversions. Virtue is akin to holiness, an attribute of godliness." End quote. Like the boy in the original starfish story, our shores may be covered with dozens or perhaps even hundreds or thousands of starfish. We cannot remove them all alone. Fortunately, we don't have to. We can have our shores washed clean through the cleansing power of Christ's Atonement. As part of the repentance process, we must say no to the temptation. But we must also say yes to Christ's cleansing blood of Gethsemane and the cross at Calvary. Through diligent and sincere repentance and through receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can have, as it were, a wave of the ocean roll onto the shores of our life and cleanse it completely not only of unwanted starfish, 
but of all debris. For he who has power to calm the sea also has power to cleanse its shore. For each of us, this cleansing should be a continuous process, as rhythmic to our souls as the waves to the sea. It is the atonement of Christ that makes possible the ultimate tidal wave of complete redemption. To receive complete redemption, we must consistently yield to the quiet but clearly discernible whisperings of the Holy Spirit. Failing to follow these promptings never leads to happiness. Yielding to the promptings of the Holy Spirit provides both the path to change and the ability to change. Baptized members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have been given the gift of the Holy Ghost. To enjoy the benefits of this gift, we must both receive and apply unto it. As we consistently listen for and heed the promptings of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> excuse me, we will experience what Alma refers to as a mighty change of heart. We read in the Book of Mormon, Behold, he changed their hearts. Yea, he awakened them out of a deep sleep, and they awoke unto God. Alma continued, I ask of you, my brethren and sisters of the Church, have ye spiritually been born of God? Have ye received his image in your countenances? Have ye experienced this mighty change in your hearts? Alma further explained that to experience this mighty change in your heart, you must be humble and willing to trust God. As you trust God, humble yourself, listen for and heed the promptings of the Holy Spirit with exactness, you become enabled to do all things the Lord commands, including the sanctification of your thoughts. This sanctification helps you adhere to solemn covenants that you make at baptism and in the temple. And adherence to these solemn covenants, in turn, help you to change your heart and transition you to a Christ-like character. President Benson said, we are to emulate the character of the Savior. And what is his character? You are familiar with this verse in section four of the Doctrine and Covenants. Remember faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, godliness, charity, humility, diligence. These are the virtues we are to emulate. This is the Christ-like character. President Benson continued, never in the history of mankind has there been a greater need for men and women to be united in their determination and actions to be Christ-like in character. To follow him is to emulate his character. When living a sanctified, Christ-like life, you will lose the disposition to do evil. You will have clean hands and a pure heart, and the image of God will be engraven upon your countenance. Again, this begins by listening carefully and consistently to the Holy Spirit's clear and discernible promptings, and then heeding them with complete exactness. By listening to these promptings, you can recognize and replace undesirable thoughts, whether immoral, unkind, self-destructive, or simply unproductive. You can replace them with charitable thoughts, consistent with the admonition of Paul, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. I believe Paul knew that by thinking on these things, Christ-like acts, habits, and character would surely follow. Elder Bruce R. McConkie said that our goal as mortals is to gain the mind of Christ to believe what he believes, to think what he thinks, to say what he says, to do what he does, and to be as he is. 
In Alma chapter 12, verse 14, we are taught that if we allow inappropriate thoughts to remain in our minds, they will condemn us. However, when we think on the things as Paul outlined, our thoughts will also justify us. Our thoughts will either lead us to godliness or they will destroy us. King Benjamin ended his address to his people in the land of Zarahemla with this warning. If you do not watch yourselves and your thoughts and your words and your deeds and observe the commandments of God and continue in the faith even until the ends of your lives, ye must perish. And now, O oh man, remember and perish not. To summarize my remarks today, remember that your acts, habits, Character and destiny will flow from even the smallest of your thoughts. Through constant effort and by the grace of Christ, you may control your thoughts by removing inappropriate or unwanted ones and replacing them with thoughts that are lo virtuous, lovely, or of good report. To do this, you must listen carefully to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and then follow those promptings with exactness. Your heart can be changed, you can be sanctified, and you will ultimately possess the character of Christ, which is consistent for all who bear his name. I hope you leave this devotional encouraged. I know you can do it. As mentioned earlier in my remarks, I left a similar devotion addre devotional address over 36 years ago with a commitment to no longer make any mistakes. I confess I have failed miserably. But in continuing to try and by applying the Lord's Atonement, I also have succeeded wonderfully. Perhaps today is your day to start your life. To st to, perhaps today is your day to start to change your thoughts and your life for good and forever. Just like me, you may not exit these doors before you fell. To you I say don't worry and don't give up. All that matters is the starfish lying right at your feet. Follow the five R's. Reach down, pick it up, and throw it out, and replace it with a pure and virtuous thought. Repent immediately if you need to, then do it again and again and yet again. Just like the starfish in the original story, it will make a difference to that one. And in time, you will look down the shoreline of your life and you will see it washed clean, pure, and sanctified. And in the water's reflection, you will see the image of Christ in your countenance. I testify that it is real, it is doable, and most importantly, it is your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. This devotional address with Jeffrey Bunker was given on April 5th, 2016.